you've been building a team now over the last couple of years, and you yourself uh, are focused particularly, I think, I, I think it's fair to say, on the nexus of entertainment and technology. And obviously, technology is a major driver of growth uh, and disruption in this industry. Yeah. As, as, as Tony was just describing. Exactly. So this is the growth summit, growth achieved by focusing on customers. Um, so I wanted to start with something that he just w was commenting on, which is this rabid race for subscribers for the streaming services, for example. That used to be, or for a while, seemed to be the only metric that really mattered uh, to investors. But that seems to be changing. Why is that? I mean, I um, so much of what has occurred or, or changed in Hollywood over the last decade kind of begins and ends with Netflix. Um, you know, you, you go back in time and Netflix is adding 25 million customers a year. Linear TV was losing millions of customers a year. And Wall Street really incentivized or encouraged all the big media companies to replicate Netflix in some way, shape, or form. And that was preferably spend a bunch of money to make original programming for a streaming service. Uh, which, which they did, and they got rewarded. Uh, and then about 18 months ago, Netflix's growth really started to slow down. Uh, that happened uh, kind of this year at the same time that there started to be growing concerns about the state of the economy and the fear of a recession. It's important to remember that all that growth in streaming and that investment happened at a time of sort of expansion where people, you know, in general, Wall Street rewarded companies that were spending and cared a little bit less about profitability. Now investors care a lot. I mean, they still want to see the growth. You know, when Netflix reports more subscribers, that's seen as a good thing. Uh, but they also want to see profits and kind of reasonable spending from a lot of the traditional media companies, whether it's Sony or Paramount or Disney or Warner Brothers Discovery. You know, they they want to see that they're you know considering profitability at the same time as growth. Right, because ultimately. You can't, if, if you're not profitable, you can't sustain this level of spending. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all these companies are basically seeing their profits go down as the, as the streaming numbers go up, because right now streaming is an unprofitable business for everyone but Netflix. Really? Yeah, I think the estimates would be that if you take Netflix out of the equation, the major streaming services lose between 10 and $15 billion a year, co collectively. Wow, OK. <laughs> I don't think I realized that. Yeah, the one, the only mystery to me is I don't, we don't really know the numbers for YouTube, which is obviously in a little bit of a different category. Um, but I, I, yeah, we, we don't get it. We don't have a clear sense of whether they make money or if so, how much, because they have really high costs. Right, right. So what are the areas for potential growth going forward, given the economic environment we're in? Um, well, Tony talked a little bit about one of them, which is international. You know, Netflix right. has now has about two-thirds of its customers outside of the U.S. Disney Plus has a, more than half of its customers outside of the U.S., a lot of them in India. Um, Warner Brothers Discovery is in the process of rebranding and expanding HBO Max. Paramount Plus is in the process of expanding. You know, there's Korea, India um, have become huge markets, especially as China has become a sort of a less dependable partner in the recent years. Latin America is big, both for Hollywood and for some of the, the music streaming companies. The other the one I'd note is, is advertising. You know, we right. have the launch of the Netflix ad tier today. Disney is introducing an ad-supported service uh, in the fall, or excuse me, in December. And then there are these sort of free services like Pluto and Tubi that are, are growing pretty quickly. What we don't know is, is that going to be growth for the whole industry, or will that just be money shifting over from linear into streaming? So I'm glad you raised uh, Warner Brothers Discovery because that, that's obviously one of the biggest mergers in this space that's happening. And now um, the CEO there has to reduce costs fairly dramatically and has to rationalize a bunch of streaming platforms that exist there. Um, what do you think of, of his strategy? Um, um. Look, right now it just looks like a lot of flash and burn, right. uh, which I suppose was inevitable when you combine two companies and there's a ton of debt involved and you're, you're, you're combining two companies with similar assets, which means you see synergies. Um, it, I, I do feel like they are t trying to take a more kind of rational approach to spending, or they, they're sort of, they epitomize the shift that we're seeing in the broader market, where previously when it was owned by AT&T, this guy Jason Kylar, who came more from a tech background, and he was all in on streaming. And that meant collapsing the period of time between a movie goes in theaters and when it's available online. 
uh, you know, that meant not licensing out library titles to other streaming services and putting all the energy of the company behind HBO Max. David Zaslav is taking a bit of a different approach where they still want to grow streaming, although they have to figure out what the name of their new service is and how they're going to market it and, and all and those things. And it's going to combine HBO and Discovery. HBO Max and Discovery Plus, they're going to squish together. Um, but they're trying to you know, bring back movie theaters and bring back licensing because they feel like there's a balance where you can still make money from some of the traditional ways and marry that with streaming. It, on paper, it sounds great. Right now, they're just sort of subject to one bad bit of press after another. Well, if their standalone streaming platforms are losing money, then it seems like that's a logical or a good strategy for him to. Yeah, consider. I mean, look, I, I, HBO Max has a lot of momentum. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's it's going in the right direction, but uh, the HBO brand is still hard for a lot of people to wrap their heads around. They see it as something that they don't want to sign up for, and so there's a very active conversation in that company right now over whether they stick with HBO Max as the name or they come up with some huh. new one. Interesting. Um, Tony also mentioned um, the idea that there'll be further consolidation uh, along the lines, I, I would think, of what we have seen with Warner Brothers Discovery and others, which leads me to the, the ask you, what are the implications of that um, for both customers and for content creators? I, the good news for customers, I think, is that you'll have there are too many streaming services right now. So you have between what's on cable and what's on streaming, you have to uh, go across six, seven, eight services to find things you want. Um, you know, certain soccer matches, if you're a fan, are only on Peacock or only on Paramount Plus. Certain football games are only on certain streaming services. There's a lot of high-end programming everywhere. Um, and so I think some of the consolidation should make that a little simpler. Maybe you, you only have to pay for three or four to get what you want. Uh, the downside to that is likely higher costs. We're already seeing, you know, Netflix has been raising prices for eight years now. Disney Plus yeah. is raising prices for the ad-free version. You know, I think that whatever HBO Max becomes will be considerably more expensive than it is today. Um, and so it'll be, you'll pay for, you know, fewer things, but probably more. The, the creator, or the kind of the creative business, I think it's a scary moment right now, because they, the last five years, it just seemed like anyone who moved to LA with an idea for a TV show could sell it. <laughs> right. um, and now they have a lot of people who are more reluctant to buy, more you know, gonna say no because it's not a not a sure thing that they'll be able to sell it to a Netflix or a Disney Plus because everyone's being more cautious about spending. Right, right. So Bloomberg obviously is investing in this kind of coverage of this entertainment economy. Um, your newsletter, Screen Time, um, is quite popular and influential. How do you see your the growth of your team and, and what's next for you guys? Uh, well, we earlier this year added uh, Ashley Carmen to our team. She's probably the preeminent reporter on podcasting. She's also writing more about music, which is something that I, I cover as well, so we collaborate a lot. We're about to add someone to cover kind of Asian media and entertainment. As of now, there's no kind of major press outlet that has a full-time uh, entertainment reporter in the region, which is insane to me. You know, you think yeah. about K-pop, you think about Bollywood, you think about anime. It's just it's a huge market, um, and that's really the beginning. I mean, I feel like right now Bloomberg does some of the best coverage of of entertainment media, and just how I think of it as a business of pop culture around. But we need more people, and we need to keep investing, and we're starting to do that. Um, and we we may have a you know we're gonna we're thinking about having an event in Los Angeles in March. Can't say a lot about it right now. There will be more to come. I hope many of you will, will be there. But all the topics that we're discussing today will, will be discussed there. Yeah. Um, go to BloombergLive.com for uh, <laughs> further details on uh, this, this event, which is going to happen and is going to be pretty <laughs> exciting. I know. I shouldn't have said May. Sorry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, be sure and check that out.